shut down the main reactors or we'll be destroyed for sure. This is madness. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a lovely welcome. Look at you all. It's because it's raining, isn't it? There's nothing better to do than see some old guy who says he dressed up in a gold costume in a thing called Star Wars. Um, look, this, this is a Comic-Con, yeah? It's not all about Star Wars, sadly. Mm. But, um, because there's things like Star Trek and back to the, oh yeah, all that, all right. You know, the other shows, which we... Um, so, has anybody here not seen Star Wars? Yeah? I mean, I know there's got to be somebody. Who, uh, who's never seen a Star Wars movie? Yeah? Um, who, there's somebody here. What is your name? Stand up. He's gonna do this. Come, come, come here, come here. Come here. Um, yes, quick as you like. Here we go. What, what is your name? Uh, Abby. Abby, uh, just come here, Abby. Why, um... <laughs> Look at this, Abby, beautiful young lady. Here's big Abby, look at Okay. So, Abby, I don't want you to be afraid, all these people staring at you, you see, but they are amazed that you've never seen a Star Wars film. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What have you been, why haven't you seen Star Wars? I don't like long series. You don't like what? It takes too much time. <laughs> no. it's just... That is the way. That is very interesting, Abby. That's an extraordinary reason not to see stuff. Uh, I'm actually lost for words. Um, okay. Well, look. Just think. Who? Who can you just stay there if you wouldn't, uh, Abby? Who can explain to Abby? I can't. It's too long. Do you, I mean, talk about suffering from, what is the point? I have suffered for my art for 45 years ago, and Abby can't be asked to go and see these movies because it takes too long. What kind of person is this? What? Okay, right. Um, who can explain? Just tell me what, what Star Wars is about. Somebody, what, how would you explain to Abby what Star Wars is about? Um, about? Well, this dude is apparently really smart, and then he... It's about a smart dude, okay. <laughs> yeah, smart dude, that's, that's a... I should. I knew I shouldn't have come today. This is, um, it's, a, it, it's about, who, who knows here what Star Wars is about? What, what is Star Wars about? Um, it's a space opera about the... It's a space opera, what did you say? It's a smart dude, it's a space opera. Yeah, no, it, 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 space opera. Yeah, young lady there. So, so, well, well, well. Well, well, yeah, yeah. It's about finding the hero inside of you and working together to get rid of the oppression. The hero inside of me. Yes, yeah. I, do, do you need to see what? Well, 
It, and it's something that happens in a galaxy far, far away. It's something that happens in a galaxy far, far away. It, it's uh, finding the hero inside of you. I'm going to come here. Abby, are you still with us? Are you still with us, Abby? We're not taking too long, are we? Is this taking too long for you, Abby? Because I worry you. I know you guys have other stuff to do. Okay. What? Okay. Yes. Uh, what is it about? It's about a droid. It's about a droid! It's about... It's about the adventures of a gold trying to... What is your name, sir? Michael. Michael explained that this film, Abby, is about a droid, a golden droid, highly intelligent and very beautiful and, and gold, and he has a friend, and he's nice with humans and so on, and he is mercilessly, mercilessly bullied over nine movies. He is put down, trivialized, made to feel nothing, made to feel the, the machine that he tries to forget that he is. People talk about the force, the hero inside yourself, all this stuff. No. It's about me. <laughs> Are you okay? Abby, would, would you at some point, you can watch it on like machines that can fast forward. Fast forward through the bits I'm not in. Start watching next month. What? I must start watching next month. You must. She is going, Abby is going to watch. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. She didn't have time. Oh, God. Now, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, normally, at, uh, when we're filming, uh, I would have a counterpart, usually R2-D2, obviously. Well, it's, it, he's not here today, so I need you to be my counterpart. I can't do this on my own. Really, I need you to be my, my counterpart, my friends today. So, um, oh, I know you will want to maybe have questions. What questions would you ask the man, the only man in this room, the only human in this room, the only human man person in Vancouver, in this room, uh, in the planet, on the planet? <laughs> The only person to be in all the Star Wars movies. <laughs> so, so what could you... Some of you may have questions, okay. Some of you will not have questions because... Because you will have bought the seminal treatise, my book, I Am C-3PO, The Inside Story. Has anybody read this book here? Okay, sadly, uh, you must now not buy it here, but you can buy it on Amazon, and I will be checking up, yes, <laughs> later, who doesn't? So this book, because it is 93,000 words that I wrote, and for those who don't like words, there are pictures. You can look at the pictures from my private library, and for those who don't like words or pictures, on Audible, you, you can have me saying the words. I don't say the pictures, but I say the words. And you might enjoy hearing some of the stories from my book. But right now, who would like to ask a question on the... Easy? Easy? Okay. I am now going to pass amongst you. And uh, wait a minute. So um, let me let me start. Who's got a question here? Young uh, young person in the blue, come and stand here. Are you are you having a good time? What what's it like standing next to a Hollywood icon? <laughs> come here. Um, just uh, what's your question? What's it like playing such an iconic role? God, that's an incredibly boring question. Now, um, we got to do better than this. What is it like? One of my least favorite things in, a, in like a press call or with a reporter, on, what is it like? What is, I don't know what it's like, I just do it. So what is it like playing? People say, what is it like to be in all the movies, in all the Star Wars movies? 
I don't know, I just am. Because you have to realize I am so close to the actual event. It's like, uh, if I put my nose to the floor, I can't see this, this event. If I put my nose to the ground outside, I can't see Vancouver. You get the point. I'm kind of too close to it all. What do you think it's like? Unreal. That's a very good, from now on, when somebody asks me a dumb question, like, what's it like to be in there? I'm going to say, unreal. <laughs> okay, who's got a really interesting question? Uh, you're a little close to that machine. Yes, young lady, come and stand here. Come and stand. This is your close-up. Lighting's so terrible, you won't be able to see it. But to, to, no, uh, it's good if you're on television or on camera to face the camera. To face that, the yeah. Camera. <laughs> we'll make an actor of her yet. Here we go. So, uh, okay, that's the camera. What's your, what's your name? My name's Darwin. Your name's what? Darwin, like the scientist. Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, Voyage of the Beetle and all that kind of thing. So, Darwin, <laughs> what is your question? Do you feel like you've become more like C-3PO over the years, or do you feel like you've always been him? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a good question, because actually when I've been playing it a lot in the studio or in audio stuff or whatever, I do have to come down off playing games, because, you know, if you arrive in safe ways, talking like C-3PO, and may I have a box of that? You know, you're likely to get arrested. Um, <laughs> but, but actors often, when they get into a role, uh, really have to de debrief themselves, yeah. Um, I don't know, you'd have to ask my wife if, uh, if I've become more irritable and uh, impatient over the years, because 3PO is a little impatient, isn't he? Yeah, uh, that's a good question there. I don't know, you, you'll have to judge by the end of it. Yes, darling. What was it like working with Mark Hamill? What was it like working with Mark Hamill? That is, oh yeah, absolute shit. I mean, what an appalling person, and what a terrible actor. I mean, he's just dreadful, and the body odor, I cannot tell you. Aww. Oh, God. No, and you know, I had to be careful where I left my pocketbook, you know, and it, I mean, that guy is a He real. smelled that bad? That you smelled... What do you want me to say? I don't know. Wow, probably all that sweat, yeah, what? probably you didn't have deodorant. What was it like? I'm teasing. <laughs> no, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah. um, because always when people say, what was it like working with so-and-so, um, what am I going to say? Just, Unreal. Yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> that gets my new buzzword. Working with Mark Hamill, he was the first uh, part of the crew or part of the cast that I met in, uh, in Elstree Studios. I was there making the costume with the guys for six months and I was all by myself and it's kind of weird. It's like the whole movie was going to be about me. Which, which, of course, it was. Um, but then Mark comes in, and I'd never really met Americans, and he was so full of life and enthusiasm and so on, and he was great. And here's the thing. Uh, we end up in Tunisia, and we're driving to work in the same car, really cheap production, so we're driving into the desert, the homestead, and we're going through each other's lines out of kind of professional, or just helping each other. And I remember turning to him and said, how can you say this rubbish with a straight face? And he said, well, your lines aren't any better. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but nobody can see my face. They don't know what I'm saying. And Mark delivered his lines with such integrity and truth. But even more, he spoke to 3PO as though 3PO was a real entity that she's back. I said, pull the plug. Let's do a 66 on her. <laughs> Mark had the unenviable job of being the hero. He was there in his, his lovely, neat little uh, cotton top and pants, and he could sit down and everything. And I really... Uh, uh, and he could go to the bathroom, he could eat, he could do anything he wanted, uh, whereas I'm stuck in the suit. But he helped people believe that 3PO was a real entity, because if he believed, then you believed. And that's the way the magic of, of theatre works. So I'm very grateful to him for being who he is, and he's stuck with it 
and uh, has maintained that character in spite of scripts and so on. Um, but the other person, of course, I, I met in Tunisia was Sir Alec Guinness. And I, yeah. Woo! Obi-Wan! And I met him, I met him actually uh, as we boarded the charter flight from London to uh, wherever it was, Tozer. And he was sitting right next to me on the plane across the aisle, and we, we chatted a bit. And when, and I've told this story in, in, in a book I wrote, I, I, I wrote a book. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, it must be fairly near the beginning. Is there because an audio version? In this book, yes, there which is. <laughs> I've read, and more importantly, I wrote, um, in the book I talk about when we got to Tozer, we got out of the aircraft and we went through customs and all that kind of thing. And there was a bus, and there was a limousine. I kind of knew the limousine was not for me. It was for Sir Alec. And I headed towards the bus, and then he got out of the limo, and he, he said, um, uh, have they given you your per diem yet? I had no idea what a per diem was. I'd never been in a movie. He said, uh, he saw my confusion. He went, uh, your pocket money, because they seem to have given me rather a lot, and I think you should have some. Aww. Yes, how can you not love a man like that? And so he was very helpful all through shooting, and one day he said to me, you know, um, filming isn't always like this. You will be in other films that will be better. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know. And one of the curious things, he was adorable to me, absolutely adorable. And then over the years, we lost touch, as, as humans do. And I was sad because it became very clear that over the years, he began to resent being known as an old man in a dressing gown, Obi-Wan Kenobi, because he had had a career that was staggering beyond pretty much any actor I can think of. His range of roles on, in theater and on film was was just legion, it was superb, a master craftsman. And he had worked so hard in characterizations and all sorts of people he'd played, whether it was Adolf Hitler or the, an old lady in kind hearts and coronets or a vicious sergeant in tunes of glory. He was known for Obi-Wan Kenobi and he resented it. And I kind of got it because I went through a time of feeling I should stop being free for you, that people only thought of me in that way. But it was all I offered. And then over the years, over the years I changed and I realized how wonderful it was to be known like this. And I had this kind of catharsis, a gentle catharsis if you will. And I reached a stage of, of absolute um, joy in having shared 3PO with everybody. And sadly Sir Alec died before he, he made that transition. And I hope he's listening somewhere and going, yes, you're right, Anthony. Uh, so let's all hear it for Alec Guinness. Nice. A young lady at the front. No, you know what? I'm going to be uh, going to come up here. This better be a good question because this is a long walk. OK, and at my age, stand up, please. Just come, come here, and your chance. Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name is Taya. Is what? Taya. Taya. What's your question, Taya? After playing the character for so long, um, how has the costume changed? Like, has it gotten more comfortable? And have you gotten more comfortable in the costume? The costume, uh, there is actually somewhere on YouTube a whole documentary um, uh, about the costume, because the original costume was not ready when we started uh, filming, and then I, I coped with it, and we did the Muppet Show and all that stuff. <laughs> Come on, get her, fetch her, new car. Right, um, and when JJ said, would I like to be in his movie, episode seven, I said, yeah, and he said, would you like to just have somebody do the voice? And I said, no, and he said, quite right. But I said, I want a new suit, and he said, of course. 
<laughs> Go away! <laughs> and so, they, uh, I went back to the studio and they 3D printed the, the whole suit, which meant you could make adjustments and so on. There were still issues, because they made the, the pants, if you like, out of a new kind of plastic. And over the weeks of shooting, that plastic got harder and harder and harder. So in the end, it was like wearing concrete wife fronts I want you to think about that. And so in several shots, we had to cheat, and I would be wearing the legs and the middle bit, and ILM would paint in the section so I could actually, I could actually climb the mountain up to uh, where the spaceship, well, spaceship, something like that. Um, and do tricks like uh, sitting down, standing up, and whatever. And ILM, in their brilliance, uh, would, would do that. And I'm very, very grateful to them. So they try, but you know what? It's an impossible costume. And I'm faking it all the time. And I'm really glad that you go along with it and believe it's real. OK, good question. Young lady here, and what's your question? What was the best Star Wars movie you casted in? What's the best Star Wars movie? Well, I leave that to you. Who's, for who is episode one the best movie? Woo! So three people. <laughs> episode two, best movie. Yeah! Six people, yes, okay, episode three. Yeah! Episode four. Yeah! Episode five. Yeah! Episode six. Yeah, Ewoks and all that stuff. Uh, episode seven. Woo! Uh, oh, God, I should have quit whilst I was ahead. Eight. Episode eight. Woo! Episode nine. Woo! Well, Zero it's a shame because, you know, episode nine, I had the best time filming. I had an absolute blast. 3PO got to do stuff he's never done before, including refusing to do stuff he was designed to do. Uh, the filming got a little, the script, there were a lot of changes that happened, and certainly the film I eventually saw was not the film that I eventually read in, in a script, but that's filmmaking process. And there's lots of good stuff in there. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of good stuff that got um, cut away because the uh, relationship between Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac, and 3PO, played by uh, Anthony Daniels, um, was delightful. That uh, it was way beyond me and Harrison, where um, he persecuted uh, 3PO. Um, but there's always stuff cut away in the movies. And um, I think that the more you study it, the more you'll find that there's good stuff there. What's your name? Edward. You don't need a microphone, do you? Right, OK. Oh, what's your question? Before you became C-3PO, what were you planning to do when you grew up? <laughs> before, I, before I grew up, I was quite grown up when I did 3PO. I think I was around 27 or 28. I had been uh, acting for a couple of years before meeting George Lucas, and th three years before that I was doing uh, drama school, and before that I was, I was just a vegetable. I just, I just needed to act, so it, it took all those. Before, th what was your question when I grew up? Well, no, um, I've never grown up. So that's it, sit down. And, and neither should I. And um, we all know what tomorrow is, don't we? <laughs> tomorrow. I, <laughs> yes, I get on a plane tonight and arrive in England a year older. It's a long flight. And I, I cannot think of a better way to spend my pre-birthday moments with you guys. Yes, young lady, come here. Stand up. What's your question? Turn around. What's your question? Um, how was it um, being in the costume and being in the desert? How was it in the costume and the desert? It was awful. It was awful. And the first day, um, it took two hours to put the costume on so that... Um, they didn't want to take it off at, at lunchtime or any time. And from seven in the morning to sundown, I stood there all by myself whilst they all went and had lunch. And they went to the bathroom and they got a drink and they sat down and they all had a really nice day. 
and I'm standing there feeling absolutely isolated and lonely and fed up and why have I signed a contract to do this job and is there a cab firm in the middle of the desert who can take me away from this horror that I have signed up to yes awful 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 um, yes stand up how was it for you to finally have center stage on the Clone Wars with the C-3PO story. How was it to be center stage on the Clone Wars uh, cartoon film? I loved it. I loved it. Forget the humans, they've had a go, you know what I mean, it's my turn. Oh yes. Um, and I, of course I love doing the, the cartoons because I don't have to dress up. I do of course stand there in the mode of 3PO because that's how my, I produce my voice on set and therefore it, uh, it helps me stay in character that I stand there in a sound studio with the guys behind glass and I stand looking like an idiot, except they say they can see the suit around me. But it's how I maintain the character. Yes, stand up please. You're wearing a funky hat, aren't you? Look at that. Uh, hi, um, do you still have nightmares about Vaseline? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> very curious question. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, when they made the costume, uh, they had two goes. The first one didn't work so well, so the second one, uh, I went to a studio, lay down, and the beautiful Liz Moore, um, uh, I think I was wearing a pair of ladies' tights, and, uh, yeah, I know, people pay money for this, you know, it's like, whoa. Uh, and then she smeared, uh, me and Vaseline all over me. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, <laughs> oh, but even better, <laughs> another one on those grounds, um, better was when uh, in the oil bath sequence, you remember that? That 3PO uh, has got such a bad dust, uh, case of dust contamination. And I, as the scene went on, they lowered me on a little lift into a vat of um, vegetable oil. And, it, because, and they had warmed it because it was uh, winter in, in England and um, they, they wanted me to feel as comfortable as possible. And as I'm... Ah, too. <laughs> Drinking again. <laughs> they, um... So... God damn it, she's back. Return no. of the Voice. Oh, no. Not no, it, it, it's a sequel. Oh, great. Oh, um, so there I am, t talking uh, to Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, and as we talk, I'm gently lowered into the oil. I, I'm praying that they didn't go too far. Um, and behind me, you could see it was warm because there was steam, right? Yeah, where you watch it, you'll see the steam coming off. In fact, the steam was made by two electric kettles that were hidden behind. <laughs> and I love that kind of special effect. Now they do it with green screen and all that. But that was two kettles boiling away. So now I'm coming down in the, in the oil, and it was kind of to my knees and up to here, a bit higher. But because the costume was so high, uh, so uh, tight, on the outside, it was coming up quite fast. On the inside, it kind of percolated slowly <laughs> and reached my knee. And then it reached a bit higher. And I'm talking to Luke Skywalker, but for a moment, I sort of pause <laughs> as it got higher mm. and higher. So uh, we put that with your Vaseline question, I think, in the expurgated thing. Um, what you will also notice in that scene is an early example of me getting it wrong. Because you have to realize that in that costume, I can only see reasonably close up, uh, straight on, straight ahead. So like a, a horse with blinkers, I don't have any peripheral vision. Like I can see my hand there and my hand here. There, I can see that. So I'm talking to Mark Hamill, and he says um, to Luke Skywalker, and I answer, and then I realize he's not there anymore, because out of sight, he's, he's now walked over to this side of the room, and it takes me a second, oh, 
there you are. It's only a very small room. So um, you will notice that uh, when you ne next watch the movie, here's a question on the dark side. Yes, yeah. Hi, Anthony. Whoa, scary. <laughs> I just want to ask a question about my favorite Star Wars movie, which is episode eight. Right. At the very end, when Luke is force projecting himself on Crate, um, Luke looks at you and gives you a little wink. Now, <laughs> does C-3PO know that's not Luke really physically present? It could be because he might have like life sensors that he could not detect him being there? No, it was in the script. Okay. Uh... <laughs> What I love, uh, and, and Mark was not having the greatest time on that movie as he's talked about, um, but what was lovely is that he, it wasn't in the script actually, but Mark needed, asked if he could, well we both agreed it was very odd that he didn't acknowledge 3PO, and Mark actually came up with that little moment. And that's why you employ good actors, that they will come up with things that the director and the script writer haven't thought about. So, all the questions. Um, the the whole story of Star Wars is absolutely packed with with things that people talk about: the good side, the, the dark side, and all that kind of thing. Some people like this, some people like that, some people like the Ewoks. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> there's something in it for everybody. In my book, did I say I'd written a book? <laughs> in my book, when I finally read it in one piece, I was surprised, and I was genuinely surprised, how many times I refer to fans, to the 501st, to fans around the world, how many times I, I sort of alluded or mentioned them. And I was really happy about that, because as I say in my book, if it hadn't been for that first audience who saw the movie, ran out, got the other guys, got their friends, it went viral, which is a phrase that wasn't around at that point. It went viral, and now it's a truly global thing, and it is down to the friendship and love of people like yourself. And today, seeing you all here, and you all, and, and uh, hopefully we've, we've got a new fan over there if she has time. <laughs> Jeez, I'm never gonna remember that, am I? Um, I just want to say, you know, so many people have come up to me and said, thank you for my childhood, and thank you for being here, and thank you for this, and thank you for that. Well, in general, I'm just going to say thank you to you all for being fans for all these years. Thank you.